title. I know some people clicked on saying we're going to talk about it. We are going to talk about it. Now, what exactly were you trying to hit on with the whole Negro League situation, bro? You know, obviously, I haven't watched basketball. I'm not basketball. I haven't watched baseball, like, intensely since, like, the 90s. Okay. Griffey, okay. Really, like, when Griffey was on top, my favorite all-time player, Ken Griffey, you know, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, you know, back, mm-hmm. back in the 2000s, stuff like that. So I saw this. Initially, when I saw it, I said, is this a troll account? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? When, when I when I saw it, so then so let me go and check on ESPN. So when I saw it on ESPN, I said, okay, this is legitimate. So immediately I said, I already know what's about to happen. I already know what's about to happen. So people are gonna start feeling a certain type of way. But MLB got integrated in 1940. Well, Jackie Robinson, the first black player to play, 1947, mm-hmm. right? So before 1947, there were no blacks allowed in the MLB. And the first thing that you see from, I guess, MLB, hardcore MLB fans, oh, this is watering things down. This is this woke culture taking shape. But I'm sitting there, I'm trying to think to myself, Hmm. what advantages, like what, like, we're talking about a sport here. We're talking about a sport. Mm -hmm. Like the, the gap that some of these individuals are trying to pretend that there was from Negro League to MLB prior to 1947, Mm -hmm. the way that they'll talk about it is you'll think that they're talking about the gap that currently resides with PWIs and HBCUs right now. Mm -hmm. That's not not the case. So you got – so Josh Gibson, obviously, is going to go down – is the leader with the career career high in terms of batting average, right? Yeah. And so, in the so, people are talking about like, okay, this is we, we, you're bringing up statistics from the inferior product, and I'm trying to figure out what makes this product inferior. What made this product inferior? We're talking about night in the 1930s, 1920s, 1910s. What is inf- what are we talking about? They weren't. It's not, it's, it's not like y'all had these automated batting cages. It's not mm-hmm. like the te- technological advances That's that they had. Now, like, like a bat is a bat. Baseball is baseball. Baseball is a baseball. That's a a fact. glove is a glove. Yes. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. And the thing that people are mis, mis, misinterpreting, you hear any athlete say this or anybody that's, you know, does sports. Keep it sports. a bean, South Coast Kane. The Go hardest, ahead and tell them why they weren't in there. The hardest thing to do, the hardest single thing to do in sports is to hit a baseball. Facts. Facts. Say that again. Say that again. Like, for the- that's the hard, like literally, that's the hardest thing to do. Like, yeah. Somewhat like I don't, I can't speak for you. I'm gonna speak for me. A joker could underhand me a softball right now. It'll probably take me 15 tries before I hit it. Mm-hmm. And we're mm-hmm. talking about underhanding us, not fast pitch. We're just talking about simply slow pitch pass ball. I mean softball. It'll probably take me 15 tries to hit it. Barely so, <laughs> so, so the thing of it is, is like mm-hmm. you're trying to you're trying to discredit this man or trying to discredit their statistics by saying that this is inferior baseball. And it's like, bro, we're talking no. about the time period now. Maybe if you want to say no. baseball got integrated in the '90s or 2000s, no. maybe I'll rock with you. But that's why they represent it. 19, 20, 19. Like, come on, bro. Listen, they ain't there. Ain't no way these guys are inferior because on, if bro. they play, if they play, and look, I'm I'm about to get deep, y'all. So forgive me. So forgive me. Y'all, y'all, y'all know, y'all know my heart. Y'all know how I am. But y'all know I like to speak truth and I like to spit facts. And sometimes that may what's up, L and V? What's going on? I, it may not roll with a lot of people say because I ride that edge, right? Now, I, I, I've talked to some older gentlemen with this, right, about this subject, and and I'm not gonna lie, and and they black, and they and 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 they said, well, shit, one of the worst things that could have happened to that is the fact that they stopped having the Negro leagues and start letting the the the, the league start being integrated. And I said, what you mean by that? I said, I said like desegregation. He said, yeah, that's probably one of the worst fucking things. I said, why? I said, why is that? He said, because that's when blacks started to stop supporting each other. 
niggas don't support niggas no more. I said, damn. Because everybody start wanting to try to fit in and everything else. You know what I'm saying? So, I, you know, and, and, and I, just, I just had to spit that out. I had to get that off. But look, anyhow, it's not an unfair project. It's not unfair because there was a lot of great players that were black that could not join into the league. And to be honest, when I first saw it, Shad, I must say that I thought it was slightly disrespectful to the uh, to, to the Negro Leagues to even be integrated into the NBA, MLB stats. I'm like, what are they doing? Like, you don't know how hard our ancestors and the people ahead of us had to fight to start their own leagues. Like, their leagues, their games used to get shut down. Their buses used to get pulled over. Their games getting delayed because the police was stopping their games. People out, uh, you know what I'm saying? People couldn't get into their locker rooms because there was a lot that went on for the Negro Leagues. A lot of our ancestors went through in order to build a whole league because we were not able to join a major league baseball so for them to do it all these years later it's like okay now are you going to give his family some kind of reparations or something for that but because if not like you know i thought it was kind of like like why why like why like that that was something that my ancestors built because y'all didn't want to because your ancestors didn't want to let them in there and it's like that and and look and look they work very hard to build that. Why? Why do that now? If anything, honor them. Like how y'all been with the jerseys and everything else. But pulling the stats in and trying to make it equal to y'all now, when they, like, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I, you come know, on. like I said, I, I, I understand that from, 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 from that particular vantage point, Cause when you, cause when you get the look, even if you get the looking at their stats, like they only play like what ninety five games compared to how many they play in baseball, a hundred and what, hundred and fifty maybe. Is is that sound about right? Oh, I don't know how many games. Oh, to me, me neither. Five, I think it was like hundred and fifty though when I looked it up, and like back, back then too. All I know is they could play their asses off. That's what South Coast Kane said, and in South Coast Kane, you're right. They could play their asses off. And a lot of them, they wouldn't let even get in the league because they knew that that shit was going to change. But the thing is, and, and, and I don't mean no slight, but look, they just, he said, my parents' entire school was run segregated. Uniontown, Alabama, 62 and 63. So, I mean, but how do we really feel about that, though? Because we have no, we have no, you know, Outlook on that. I'm just saying that we we they built it, and there was a lot of greats in the in the uh, league. Now Pittsburgh is where I'm from. Pittsburgh Crawfords, two of the best. Some of the best baseball came out of from the Homestead Grays, correct? That's in Munhall, PA, which is not that far from Pittsburgh. You you actually can say you probably could slide your way in saying you're from Pittsburgh if you live in Munhall, PA. Okay, Munhall, PA, the Homestead Grays were a great team, one of the most known and. Um, Negro League baseball teams that there is. I'm pretty sure of it, right? And, uh, I mean, everybody knows all of them, but, you know, Homestead Grays, Ring of Bell, then Kansas City Monarchs, you know, so forth and so on, and the Pittsburgh Crawfords or whatever. And um, so growing up there, I knew a whole lot about the Negro Leagues and how much we really honor that growing up in the hood. Now, there's a place called Homewood. There's an area called Homewood that's in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I played Little League Baseball at Homewood, and they actually make us take like a little course on the Negro Leagues and knowing about that and how much it actually meant to the community in Pittsburgh and how many jobs and how many stores and black businesses there was and how much it fed off that. Like the Negro Leagues was so much more, and it's like they shut it down because people want to fit in. And 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 I love it, and and I love and I love the fact that I got uh, Caucasian supporters like South Coast Kane, that's a huge fan of mine, and a very huge supporter. God bless your soul, man. You're a great guy. I love people like you. I wish there was a lot more people like you, but the fact is, South Coast, you know that there's not a lot of people out there like you that love us and give us those chances and opportunities out like out here. So, with that being said, you know what I'm saying, like. 
there's not a, that we don't support each other enough and everybody want to fit in, but we're not going to fit in everywhere. That's where everybody has to stop at. So I, I un, in a way, I kind of understood what they were saying about, you know, the segregation and everything like could have been what one of the worst things that happened. Could it have been? Really think about that. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm just asking a question to y'all. Could that have been one of the worst things that ever happened? Because of the way that everybody wants to fit in and wear other brands and not support each other. And everybody talks about it. We talk about it a lot. I'm sure y'all heard it a lot. Support Black-owned businesses. But do y'all really? Do we really? I mean, come on. Without people like South Coast Kane, a Caucasian man that's supporting you, what do we really got? I mean, I'm being honest. Let's be honest. Let's be real. Let's talk real. Let's get real here for a second. Let's really get real here for a second. Let's get down to it. Like, do we really like, you know what I'm saying? Would I really have a shot out here? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure I do. And I and I will, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, like, real for real, for real. But um, I just like I, that's just where I stand on this whole thing at. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it was uh, um, and that's just where I stand, and I'm gonna stand on that. And I always have to say that to the end is that. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, uh racist. I, I hope y'all don't take me as that way, but I am black man. And I am aware of myself and my surroundings. And, um, I do not preach that to my children. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't teach that or anything like that to my children, but my ancestors, they strong build that. I won't say that in closing and before you go in and cook on the rest of it, they worked very hard to start this league and the league supported a lot in the community. And, um, I thought it was a slap in the face. I mean, like I said, I, I, I can understand, understand from that vantage point. And like I said, I, I just try to just separate it from the the bigger picture and just try to keep it, you know, within the sport. Because I agree 1,000% with everything that you said. Because like you said, obviously, you can't take away from the past and what transpired to get to this particular point. Mm -hmm. But and – I, and, I, and I do, you know, to, to an extent, I do – feel like that this shit and the biggest thing that you know like I said upset me is the fact that individuals like you say this is an inferior product and it's like no nah, I mean I, I wanna I wanna I wanna be able to look and say all right this this is this is what it was because obviously Josh Gibson passed away like the year or maybe a year after two years after MLB was even integrated. So he mm -hmm. he wouldn't he couldn't even he wasn't even able to actually be a participant in it. But the the fact of the matter is is like there were certain things they picked up from the Negro League games that they started doing yeah. at like major league games. Like you know what I mean? Like the concessions, the way we ran it, the way that things were different. Like entertainment at major league baseball games that never happened. That was something that I correct me if I'm wrong, South Coast. Like, you know, you would know a little bit more about this, but the little bit that I read, I didn't have a much time to, but it was like they they looked at that business model. So for it to be an inferior pro like a product, like how? Like so much came from that. Like they literally, like, you know, the little funny shit happening at halftime where they got the fucking uh mascots running and doing silly shit. Like shit like that came from Negro League, bro. You know what I mean? The bands yeah. and shit playing music and all that. That shit came from me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, but, let's, let's call yeah. it what it is. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that shit came from there. So there's a lot of things that they picked up on from that. And they seen there was a lot of good shit going on at the Negro League game. So, you know, um, it's it's unfortunate that they would say that shit. It's, it really is because, like, they trying to, they trying to dumb it down. Like, that's never been inferior. Like, there was some greats that was in there. Greats. Great, they couldn't. Uh, I, uh, they couldn't. They couldn't fuck with a lot of people. Now there was some great people in baseball. Let's not. I'm not knocking baseball because there was a lot of great players that was in the major league baseballs back in like the 1930s. You had like uh, what was his name? Uh, one of the good names that people don't know about, and you're gonna be shocked. South Coast gonna be proud of me. This one was named Kiki Collier. I think his name was Collier. And uh, back that's back when like Babe Ruth and uh, Hank Wilson and all them, Hack Wilson and all them was playing. I did my little bit of research and do my homework a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Back in the 19th, this is the 30s, so I wasn't born, but you probably heard some of these guys. But 
they their, their model was, you know, they looked at that and they said, oh, well, if we can add this in the major league, we'll make a lot, have a lot more fun. And by not, by the time 1947 came, okay, so Detroit had, had a team too, right? Detroit, what was their team called again? The Detroit Stars, I want to say it was. So, and, 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 and you know, Chrysler and all that was for the, the Motor City in uh, Detroit. And their Negro League team actually had been picking up a lot of steam. There actually was a lot of money generated around that shed. And the Major League seen that model. So they was like, we got to integrate this shit. Because every- <laughs> But you know, up. the thing, yeah. like I said, I, I always, I just want to, like I said, I always just want to do it player for player. Just compare mm-hmm. player to player. Josh Gibson to Babe Ruth. Audi, you know, just, 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 let's just look at it just from a, just from a player a player for player standpoint because like okay. I said, we're okay. talking about a time period where there wasn't there wasn't an, there wasn't an advantage there wasn't like supplemental advantages that were not like yeah advantages obviously like you say you know transportation back and forth you know to the game that differs but once we get on the field and like we're talking about we're comparing product a to product to product b and they're both the same product and let's just yeah. do it like that like i said i agree with yeah. you standpoint of like it's even hard to compare the stats well yeah because when i was looking at it it was like they still only have about 75 percent of the statistics from the negro league so it's like you're talking about a whole 25 percent so they could change the record books even more Mm -hmm. you know you know it could sway it further this way sway it further that way but I, I just look at it from that. I look at it from that particular standpoint. Like, I got you. Let's not act like that. Let's just treat this like how it was when it was the um, AFL and the NFL. Okay. Where you got two leagues. What? Well, not the yeah. Well, they yeah. were at the AFL. Yeah. Yeah. AFL, it NFL. The AFL, like, NFL it's the point. same. It's the same product. Same product. And. Obviously, they come together, whatever the you know the situation. I mean, like I say, from a financial standpoint, like I say that that discussion can be had from sports all the way down to schools to everything mm-hmm. else. We can have that, you know, we can have a discussion about the economic problems that transpire from that. Mm-hmm. But just from a just a statistical standpoint, I mean, it's about time. That y'all do this because y'all are making it seem like this particular league was just something that just happened overnight. Like they only played like two or three seasons, and like, okay, well, you want to take two or three seasons worth of stats and try to integrate them into over a hundred some odd years worth of statistics. It's like, no, nah, it's like it's time to bring some additional awareness to this. Like, okay, who is Josh Gibson? Now it's time to look at like mm-hmm. some of the additional monetary benefits that can come from that. Like. Film, documentaries, Oscar Charleston, yeah, all, all, all these different type of things like mm-hmm. this. So, but like I said, once those people get their, they're not gonna get their panties out of a bunch. They not, but just the, the fact that the matter is, is like hitting a baseball is hitting a baseball. All right, I got you, I got you, bro. I mean, look, I ain't mean to get too deep on the shad, you know what I'm saying? But without, without, I don't feel like you could talk about. The Negro League, without talking about why, why was it around? Why was it? Why, why did we need it? I mean, I mean, we, I mean, you know what I mean. I mean like we can talk about know. it, but why, why not? You know, why not try to educate those who don't know? We know why. Why didn't? We, but you know that. But but the, but that's the, but that's the funny thing about this whole thing. Like the funny thing about baseball, because baseball does have this has had this perception for the longest period of time, and I've said this because someone asked me, and like I say, you know, not to sound offensive or anything, like. Like, why do you want to play baseball? Like, man, I don't want to play. I don't want to play the white man's sport. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the, I mean, this is the way we uh-huh. looked at it because that's the, that's the perception of it. But when you look at all the rest of the sports. We love baseball coming up. I wish I wish more yeah. of us did play baseball. We love baseball coming up. Like I said, I don't know what it is. Like, football and baseball in Pittsburgh is huge. Huge, huge. Like, like you ain't going to find too many basketball players in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but you're going to find some good-ass baseball players and some good-ass football teams. That's what you're gonna find on here in Western Pennsylvania. Cause I mean, baseball was huge when I was little. We we love baseball. We did. And it's just like I said, it's just the culture that 
yeah, yeah, who puts into it, you know what I mean? Who who puts into it? Like it's huge around there. But yeah, some great, some great guys, real quick before we get on up out of here. Some great names that's gonna be in the uh, record books and uh MLB. Now you're gonna hear about Josh Gibson, who's a catcher for the Homestead Grace. Um, you're gonna hear about our Oscar. Our-